something I've talked about extensively in these videos is finding counterexamples when dealing with questions like uh, about necess necessity and sufficiency. But something I think I really glossed over was how exactly do you find those counterexamples? So for example, here's a question about necessity. Um, you may as well just replace this with which the following is necessary. That's what these, these statements mean. And now I'm going to think of counterexamples for these two things, but how do I go about finding them? Um, that's what this video is really going to be about. And I'm going to give you four, uh, I think hopefully four top tips for this. The first two are kind of really boring, but number one is practice. You can see in my old videos when I did uh, like the 2017, 2018 papers ages ago, I don't actually find all the counterexamples and I have to spend time doing some proper wishy-washy analytics instead. Um, just practice finding them. Like I I've practiced a lot now and I'm much better at it. Just give yourself time to practice these. Make sure you do every question. Um, in the in the old papers, practice every time. Um, yeah, I've talked about this in the in the top tips video for Tamira generally, haven't I? Just practice. The next thing is allow yourself some time, right? If you think about this question, which is the first question I think from 2020, this uh, every single person taking Tamira will easily give themselves two or three minutes to do this question. Like they know what they're doing, they just need to change all these to powers of x, and then they can differentiate, and then they'll put it back into this kind of form. Everyone's going to spend a couple of minutes on it. Everyone wants that mark. The same is true here, right? Don't think that you need to come up with a counterexample straight away. You can take a few minutes to do this question. Like that's absolutely fine. You, you know, I don't, I don't record these videos before I've seen the question and just come up with the counterexamples immediately having read them. I come up with the counterexamples because I've thought about them before and then I just show them on the screen, right? So give yourself some time. You don't need, it doesn't need to be automatic. So those are the first two top tips and I think that's mainly what it is. The other two though are actually things that you can think about in the exam. Um, the third one is go as trivial as possible every single time. Right? Do not try and come up with anything complicated. It's often the case actually that the, the, the more trivial, the more likely it is to work. So for example, if we're looking at this, got an arithmetic series, uh, sum is apparently 20. The first term of the sequence is even. So, okay, let's think trivial here. Let's just come up with a series that has two terms. Can I do that? Just just a very short series, two terms. Um, can I find one where the first term is, is odd? Well, yeah, nine and then 11 will add up to 20 then, right? So nothing, I didn't come up with 10 terms, just nice, simple two, that will get the job done. Um, n is even, okay, well, I need to find a counterexample here, so I need n to be odd, I need the number of terms to be odd. What's the most trivial odd number? Probably one. Can I find an arithmetic sequence with one term? Yeah, 20, right? I can, uh, that, there, fine, that'll do. That's got an odd number of terms. Again, uh, as trivial as possible here. Common difference even, uh, again, a common difference of one would be the most trivial counterexample here. What happens if I just add up the first few numbers starting at one with a difference of one? It just so happens you get to 21, which is really useful because that means if you just knock off the one and start at two instead, you'll end up with your counterexample there, right? So going as trivial as you possibly can, don't overcomplicate this. Um, you're almost looking for loopholes, really, like uh, is, is another way you could think about it. Just be aggressively annoying and look for trivial loopholes, uh, and that's quite a good way of doing it. Um, another one here um, would be, uh, so 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 here they've got another, it's another sequence question. They're, they're looking for sequences where the first n terms add up to the same thing that the first two m terms do. So for example, the first four terms here add up to the same thing the first eight do because of all the cancelling that goes on here. So that's kind of interesting. And then it asks me to find a counterexample. Well, it doesn't. It asks me whether this is sufficient. I'm going to try and find a counterexample. So I'm going to try and find a case where this is true, but this doesn't happen. And again, thinking if trivial is possible, the most trivial thing that I could do is just change this slightly. So let's just make 10 and minus 2 the thing that we start with and just see whether that works. And it doesn't, right? Because these terms here don't cancel properly, just like they did here. Um, so this doesn't work, and I can say that's not true. So I'm, I'm just taking what they've given me and just changing it very slightly because I know if I do, this same thing won't happen again because the zero messes it up. Um, okay, so necessary that D is even. Again, what's the most trivial non-even number? One. Let's find a term, uh, a sequence where, where um, the difference is one. Well, there's a, a sequence where the difference is one, but it doesn't really work because the sum of the first one times is zero, but then two is one, so that doesn't match. Sum of the first two times is one, sum of the first four times is much bigger. So it's clear that we're going to need some negatives. So let's just move this sequence back one place and go with that. 
sum of the first one terms is minus one, sum of the first two terms is two, is also minus one, because of course the zero is great here. Um, so there, there's a sequence, I don't even need the one, two, and three, there's the most trivial thing I can think of, and it's not necessary that the difference is even. So going as absolutely trivial as you can um, is a really top tip for this, do not overcomplicate this, um, just think of trivial cases. Um, the next tip uh, is, is think of edge cases, negatives and decimals. Negatives and decimals are great because they often make everything go wrong, or at least overgeneralized statements go wrong. And edge cases as well, I'll explain what they are in a second. But here, here's a good example. Uh, again, sufficiency, so I'm trying to show that a, a case where uh, one of these things is true, but the original case isn't. Um, and, and negatives are going are gonna to fly through here because, of course, uh, and you should think that when you see inequalities because negatives also often mess up inequalities too but they definitely get messed up when you raise them to the power four right because negatives turn to positive whereas positive also turn to positive so here's a really good case where um, this thing is true because minus two to the four is 16 um, which is greater than one to the four which is one but this is, doesn't hold because of course this is less than this um, so negatives really help us out here and they help us out later on as well with, with this one here um, so, so do think of negatives um, because they're going to be really helpful and decimals as well can be really helpful. We'll go through some of those at the end. Now, what do I mean by edge cases? Well, I mean, here's an, an, another case from, from this paper here. So we've got some numbers in standard form and it's saying you add two of them up, you get a third one, which the following must be true. So again, I'm, I'm looking for cases where these things aren't true. Edge cases means let's just go with 8.9 here, right? Let's go with 8.9 as close to the actual thing as I can get on the edge, but not actually that. Um, because the reason that's good about going with 8.9 here is even if this didn't work, if this didn't work as a counterexample, I'd be pretty confident that I could never find anything that worked. Whereas if I went with like one straight away, I'd have to be like, oh, well, just because one didn't find a counterexample, maybe something larger than one, but less than nine would have. So going up to the right up to the boundary, um, the boundary case is, is often a really good idea to, to try and to try and find a counterexample. Because if you don't find it, you're pretty confident, therefore, that it will work. Um, I won't run through this properly, but I did this in a very recent video. But yeah, you just try this, you put them into into their non-standard form, you add them up, you find number C in standard form, so that's the counterexample of that one, uh, and so on, we keep going. It also counterexamples this, this one and this one, which is very helpful, um, uh, and so you're, you're left with um, either this or none of them, but of course none of them isn't even an option, so therefore this must be true. Uh, maybe I should have made that as tip number five, be cerebral enough to notice when you can have stop working and when you don't have to find any more counterexamples at all, which I didn't notice because I kept going with this, but anyway. Cool. Um, here is a worksheet that I made um, a while ago for some class ages ago, I don't know when. Um, you can pause the video here, you can find a bunch of counterexamples to this if you want to. In five seconds I'll start running through them. Okay, well that was less than five seconds, but I, I couldn't be bothered to actually wait. You, I'm sure you paused the video. Okay, well even numbers more for four, counterexample is six, good. I mean this is super easy warm-up. Uh, this is my year sevens. Uh, I drill into my year sevens. Decimals, so that's the decimals case. Decimals often mess these things up. Negatives mess up this one, of course. When you take away a negative, it gets bigger. Um, trivial case here. What's the most trivial? Prime two. Of course, then five would be uh, when you add three. Of course, this doesn't work at any other time, right? Because every other prime is odd. When you add three, you get an even, which can't be prime, except for the trivial case of two. Um, you can never have consecutives. Again, trivial two and three. So think of the trivial ones. Um, the smallest ones, uh, so yeah. Square root of number is always smaller than the number itself. Decimals mess this up, of course. And when I say decimals, I actually mean numbers between zero and one. Maybe I should have said that more clearly as well. Numbers between zero and one mess this one up. Um, numbers between zero and one often mess up inequality ideas. That's a, that's a good one to think of. Sum of two consecutive numbers, always greater than two. Again, negatives and zero mess this one up. For example, zero and one um, is is equal um, than, than this integer here. Um, so... Yep, cool. A number with four total factors has two different prime factors. It's slightly harder to come up with. Um, my top tips don't really work too well on this one. Um, but again, if you if you try and think or try and find a loophole, um, I guess to this one. Uh, in fact, a number with four to, has two different prime factors. Oh uh, yeah, sorry, eight um, doesn't have two different prime factors. It's got one prime factor, which is two. It, two just appears three times. Um, so and likewise, any cube. And when I say any cube, I actually don't mean any cube. Come up with a counterexample to prove why I didn't think this through properly. Um, what I actually meant was any cube of a prime number will work here. Um, cubes of non-prime, like 4 cubed is 64. 64 has much more than 4 total factors. Cubes of primes will work, but not any cube. I'm wrong about this. 
I'm thinking it through a little bit further. Anyway, uh, for any prime number, there's at least one prime within the next 10 integers. This is not one that you're going to be able to find a counterexample for easily. You just need to think this one through very carefully. Um, if you take some number n, which is the product of the first 10 primes, I don't know what that number is because I didn't bother to work it out. Now, n itself is definitely not prime. Um, n my, uh, sorry, n plus 1, you don't actually know. It could be or it might not be. It doesn't really matter. Um, but n plus 2 is definitely not prime either because n it has a factor of 2 in it. So therefore, n plus 2 does because it's 2 further on. n plus 3 isn't prime either because it's got a factor of 3 in it. So um, n has a factor of 3. When you plus 3, that number will still have a factor of 3. Likewise for n plus 4, n plus 5, n plus 6, and so on. And so n to n plus 10, sorry, n plus 2, all the way up to n plus uh, 10, or even further, actually, because of the other primes, because of, like, the 4 doesn't need the prime. You can try this. Um, I'm not explaining it very well, but this is... Uh, there's a really good video, I'll put it in the description actually, from Terence Tao, who talks about how to make arbitrarily large gaps between the prime numbers. This is what I'm talking about. You just multiply a bunch of numbers together, you start adding them together, uh, adding those numbers on, and you end up with infinitely or arbitrarily long chains of numbers that can just all be non-prime because they all have, um, they're all built from this n and then you move on. I'm not explaining very well, I'm quite tired. I'll put the video from Terence Tao in the description, it's a good video. Um, if you sum an infinite number of non-zero positive uh, numbers, the result is infinite. Uh, counterexample is uh, very trivial to find. Um, if you just do like this loopholey thing where you just do this, of course the sum of these is going to be 1.1111. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Like it's just going to be 1.1 1, 1 occurring, uh, which is of course not infinite, so that's a good one. Of course anyone who does A-level maths knows that um, not all sequences um, have an infinite sum or a series, I should say, uh, and you probably know the check for when they do and don't as well. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching, and I was really, I hope that's helpful. I know that I um, probably didn't make the best video ever there, but I hope it was helpful uh, to some people.